Hello and welcome to GP Notebook TV. My name is Anish Katecha and I'm a GP in South Wales. Today I thought I'd talk you through the recent NICE guidelines that's come out on the management of acne vulgaris. Now this came out in June 2021. And what I thought I'd do is essentially break this down and give you some key take-home messages that I feel are important for us in general practice. So let's start by setting the scene. Well, we all know that acne vulgaris is a really common condition and it usually affects uh, about 80% of, of people uh, between the ages of about 11 and 30. Um, and it usually typically affects the face, uh, the chest and the back. And the real problem with it is it really affects people's well-being and they're really self-conscious about it. So really the aim of treatment is to reduce the severity of, of acne, um, try and stop it from recurring um, and try and help people uh, with, their, with their symptoms and, and, and stop any uh, potential of scarring. So just to reiterate, um, when we're talking about the severity of acne, um, when we talk about mild to moderate, that would be consistent with uh, maybe some non-inflammatory uh, lesions, typically these are comedones, um, up to 34 inflammatory lesions um, and um, up to two nodules. And when we're talking about moderate to severe acne, um, we can be talking about 35 or more uh, inflammatory lesions. This can be with or without the non-inflammatory ones uh, or, or, and or three um, or more nodules. So when we've got these patients in front of us, the first thing we should be doing is really um, advising them on, on basic skin care routine and using um, non-analcalinic um, cleansing products twice a day and avoiding oily based ones. Um, we should be telling people to take uh, any makeup off at the end of the day uh, as well. Um, and the other thing is that's important is to try and tell people to avoid picking um, at their lesions because this can increase the risk of, of scarring. We should be um, telling them that there's no specific diets um, that can help treat acne and really nice recommend just a, a well-balanced and healthy diet. But when it comes to treating acne um, with um, pharmacological uh, methods, um, what can we offer these people? Well, first line um, would be really a, a, a mix of a mixed combination of, of two of any of the topical preparations that I've, I've put on the screen for you here, um, as well as oral limacycline or doxycycline um, is where we would really go first line. Um, now, if patients have a particular preference um, or any of these are contraindicated, then we can use monotherapy with um, topical benzyl peroxide. We should be uh, um, telling people that um, the topical preparations can initially cause a bit of skin irritation. So they can start by trying alternate day uh, regime um, or actually having a short application um, initially. So kind of washing it off after about uh, an hour or so. Now, if we can't use the um, oral tetracyclines, then we can offer trimethoprim or erythromycin instead. Now we shouldn't be using monotherapy with um, either oral antibiotics or topical antibiotics and they shouldn't be used together either. So that's what we should be offering um, as, as, as first line uh, therapy but two particularly important notes when we're talking about um, women. Um, Topical retinoids um, and oral tetracyclines shouldn't be used in pregnancy. Um, and actually, if people, if women are uh, having treatment for acne and they're looking for hormonal contraception, we should be trying to give them, if there are no other contraindications, the combined oral contraceptive pill because we know progesterone only methods can make acne a bit worse. Now, at that first consultation, it's really important to remind people that the, the benefits of treatment can take up to six to eight weeks to really notice. So really giving them that message to comply with the treatment and continue with that treatment and, and not giving up after that initial couple of weeks. Um, and we should be reviewing people at about 12 weeks um, to see if they've had any, uh, any benefit. 
Um, now, at that 12-week review, um, what we can do is either offer a second-line uh, treatment, um, and that would be in line with the severity of their acne as we did with, uh, with first line management uh, and treatment options. Um, and second line really is, is anything that you haven't already tried. And if, of course, the, se the severity is of, of, um, of the stage where you need to refer to dermatology, then that's an option as well. Now, importantly, if women have um, a, a diagnosis of uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome and they have troublesome acne, um, then as second line option, you can offer them uh, a six month trial of um, uh, cosiprindiol uh, as well uh, and see if, if, if they get any benefit from that. Now, remember that if you're giving them uh, any patient an oral antibiotic, um, then really we should be trying to stop this as soon as possible, but really um, trying not to continue it after six months. Now, if you've got to the stage where you've tried either two treatments or one treatment, uh, um, but people are really self-conscious, um, then we can uh, refer over to our dermatology colleagues in secondary care. And here on the screen, I've just given you a list of other reasons that you might want to consider uh, referring people to the, the dermatology department, um, either urgently or, or as a matter of, uh, of routine. And, and really what they can offer uh, are things like uh, using isotretinoin, tretinoin um, because these do have um, you have do have to consider um, uh, risk of pregnancy or, or, or any mental health issues now you know some GPS might be um, happy to do this in primary care but certainly most of us would probably be referring to secondary care or at least asking advice from secondary care for this um, uh, they can also use um, photodynamic therapy um, or sometimes they can use some uh, intralesional uh, corticosteroids to see if that helps. Now, what do we do if people um, have relapses um, uh, um, in, in the symptoms of their acne? Well, you can offer another 12-week course of, of, of a particular treatment, um, but if we're getting people coming back over and over again um, with um, recurrent relapses, um, then you can offer them a combination of, of topical benzyl peroxide and topical um, uh, adapalin. Um, uh, and, and if you can't use one of them, then you can also use um, uh, uh, monotherapy uh, if needed. So really, uh, in, in summary, uh, we know uh, acne vulgaris is a really common presentation to us in primary care. Um, uh, and people are quite self-conscious about uh, about their their lesions and their skin, um, um, and it's really important for us to keep updated and to have a, a really standardised approach to kind of how to treat um, these people, but also to refer to secondary care if appropriate. Now, I hope you found this uh, short video helpful, and I really thank you for listening. Uh, please do continue uh, to tune in um, uh, to GP Notebook TV for for more videos. Thank you.